Ivan Irons here, ready to do uh, the third video in the Sheet Cam series. And in this one, we're really going to talk about G code extensions, which is just really the file extension for the G code, and then also setting up the machine. So let's take a look at the first one. Uh, as you make various files, uh, those files will have an extension to them, and you can change it in Sheet Cam. You just go up to Options there, like I did, pick the uh, G code file extension. And you can change it to a number of different things, whatever your control software likes as a file extension. So, for example, a Microsoft Word document, it's a .doc, Microsoft Excel document, .xls. Well, certain control softwares like certain sorts of file extensions, and you can change that here in SheetCam. Let me close this out, bring in a, another screen here. Here's an example of three different files that are all essentially the same, except for they have a different extension at the end. So this one's a .txt, this one's a .tap, and this one's a .nc. So very easy to change this in sheet cams, not a big deal. Uh, you just need to figure out what your uh, software likes uh, to see for an extension. Here I just opened up that file. You'll see all the different uh, G codes here. This is uh, to cut out a fighter jet. Uh, this one just happens to be the TXT file. So just know that you can change that at will inside of SheCam. Go to Options, G code file extension, put dot whatever you want right here. So that's the first thing we're gonna do in this video. The next one, we're gonna talk about the machine and setting up the machine. Go up to Options, excuse me, close out of this. Go to Options, Machine, and a number of different parameters show up. Now, SheetCam has no idea what your machine looks like. And any cam video, they, they need to, any, uh, excuse me, cam software needs to know what your machine looks like. And why is that? Let's just pop over. I have a, uh, a shot here of, this is a plasma table. And for sheet cam to make the code correctly, it needs to know where the X axis is, the Y axis is, and the Z axis. So as this torch here travels around, it can go in the X, Y, Z. And sheet cam, it needs to know where that's located so it can describe your table accurately. Let's pull her back up, and uh, to do that, you go into uh, this options machine. You'll see right here, this is kind of a representation of a table, either a plasma cutter or a wood router. And you can pick the machine's origin, and what that is is the zero, zero. So for example, on your machine, if it's here, you'll see those got grayed out. You can pick that if this is zero, zero to you, or if this is, it's very flexible, and you can go ahead and change those. I usually like to just keep it with this inner coordinates and uh, zero, zero. This is zero for the X, zero for the Y. The next two down are the working envelope of your machine. A lot of times your table is gonna be a lot bigger than uh, your working envelope. So let's say for example, we have a 10 inch by 10 inch, well, 10 inch uh, working window that our plasma cutter can travel around in this square and cut out any part. That is that is the working window. The next two down here are the coordinates for the table. And this will become apparent in a second, but let me put a minus one here and a minus one. And then uh, the final two here for the table is the actual table size. So maybe we have a 36 inch three feet, you know, 36 inch by 36 inch table. And the final one is really the Z axis. You'll see it's max clearance between chuck and table. Let's just put uh, three inches. We'll say it's a plasma cutter. We'll click OK. We'll take a look at this. Um, this is, this overall square is our machine. This is its table here. This 10 by 10 square, We'll go in a little closer. This 10 by 10 square is the working window of that. 
This is where we can actually cut with plasma. Most machines don't look like this. It'll be, you know, a lot closer, but uh, there'll be an area here that you won't be able to run your machine for a number of different reasons because the axis is there. And you can go ahead and change this at uh, any time. Say we want a little more uh, in this area, we'll put minus two inches, minus two inches, we'll say okay. And you'll see that move that square out or the working area out into the machine a little bit more. So feel free, what you're trying to do is describe your machine to sheet cam. So when it produces G-code, it lays it out in this working area versus out here where it's going to run into different things. Now there's another cool feature here with machines. Uh, maybe you use sheet cam with a number of different machines. Well, guess what? You can save this machine out and call it up later. So say for example, this is our plasma machine and uh, we could save it as that. We'll just say plasma save it and uh, maybe we have a router uh, wood router or something that one's a little different it's 24 inches by 24 and its uh, working envelope is uh, 20 by 20 and uh, we'll save this machine out as not our plasma but our router okay and right here this is our router well, guess what? I want to start programming for my plasma cutter. I go in here, I load machine, I bring up the plasma. Okay, and here we are back to our plasma cutting machine. So it's very flexible in that way. You can load multiple machines and uh, call them up at will. So those are the two things for video three, that G-code extension, and then really walking through and describing your machine to SheetCam. It needs to know where it can work, where it can travel. It needs to know what your reality looks like.